Hi everyone and welcome. This video is a short story about Jane Jameson. If you enjoy this story, please give the video a like and please do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to hear more stories like this one or about the history of the North East. Jane was the first person to be executed publicly on the town moor for around 12 years and she was also the first woman to have been executed for around about 70 years. So the execution in 1829 was expected to draw a very large crowd. This is her story. Jane was born in December 1796 to parents James and Margaret. Her parents having married in 1786. Jane was one of their middle children and she had at least eight brothers and sisters, four older and four younger than her. Little is known of her early life, but we can imagine that it would not have been an easy life. Jane was also known to have at least one living child herself, a boy, but she had not actually been married. Margaret, the victim, and also Jane's mother, had been born in around 1772. Her father is given the name of William and her mother is unknown. At the time the crime was committed, she was a resident in the Keelman's Hospital in Newcastle. I have chosen to say resident as I sometimes prefer this to the term inmate, which was more readily used at the time. On January the 2nd, 1829, at the Keelman's Hospital, Jane was visiting her mother. It's possible they had been drinking together or had been drinking before meeting up. That part is a little unclear. Another resident, Mary Carr, said she had heard a loud argument on passing the door to Margaret's room and she saw Jane pointing a poker at her mother in what she described to be a threatening manner. She did not stop but carried on her way to where she was going hoping that the argument would have blown over by the time she returned. Another resident known by the name of Anne also heard the argument and claimed that Jane was shouting abusively at her mother and that her mother had accused Jane of killing two of her children who had been born out of wedlock. Jane and her mother were alleged to be quite heavy drinkers and often had arguments. It seems, however, that this time was different. On Mary's return, both she and Anne heard Jane screaming and her mother shouting, Oh dear! Mary does not seem to have much more to say on the subject, but Anne described the scene as Margaret now laying on the bed and Jane claiming that she had fainted. Anne accused her of killing her mother, but Jane claimed she had done nothing and that this was all down to someone called Billy. Billy had indeed visited Margaret the previous day, but he had not been there on the day of the argument, so Anne did not believe this. Due to, no doubt, the noise and the commotion going on, two more people soon arrived, a lady called Fortuna and a Mrs Duncan. Mrs Duncan also accused Jane of killing her mother, and this time Jane replied, saying, Are you going to get me hanged? At this time, Margaret stirred from her faint and was asked who had done this to her and she simply said, Jane. Jane, they all said, was clearly drunk and her mother also. The ladies tried to move Margaret but on doing so they saw the wound in her chest and decided it was best not to. Jane had, it seems, stabbed her mother with the poker. Not wishing to go into details, it was said to have been a very nasty wound. The steward of the hospital had by now arrived and he was also in the room and he was also trying to find out what had happened and what was going on. For some reason, it seems to have taken them some time to call for a doctor after finding Margaret so ill. Margaret did not die straight away. She was seriously ill for some time and at times she was able to talk and said at one point that she had simply fainted and fallen on the poker. Perhaps this was because she realised how bad things were for her daughter or perhaps she was just simply delirious. 
Jane was by now claiming to have no memory of the incident at all. Margaret died on January the 13th, 1829. She was 60 years old. Jane was then arrested for murder. Her trial began on March the 5th at Newcastle Guildhall. It seems she was too poor to be able to afford a lawyer. The courtroom was full and the trial lasted for several hours. Although there are scant details of the trial itself, it seems that Jane's main reason for attacking her mother was that she had accused her of killing her two illegitimate children. But Jane still said that she could remember nothing of the day, especially of the attack itself. The jury heard evidence from Mary Carr and also from Anne, who both spoke of what they had seen and heard that fateful day. The jury took just 45 minutes to return a verdict of guilty of murder and when Jane was asked if she had anything to say she said I am not guilty. The judge on passing sentence said she had committed a most awful crime against her own mother and sentenced her to death by hanging. At this time the court still followed the ruling of the Murder Act of 1751 so Jane's body would afterwards be given to surgeons for dissection. The execution was set for March the 7th, 1829, in public on the town moor in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Jane was not without remorse, and at hearing that she was to be dissected, she wept and had to be carried back to prison to await her fate. Whether she wept for herself or for her mother is unclear, but it does seem to have been more about what was going to happen to her. In her cell, she was visited by the prison chaplain, the Reverend Robert Green. It is said that she paid great heed to what he said to her and seemed to be quite concerned for her spiritual good. He, as others had done, asked her to confess to her crime and she replied by saying, I might as well say that I had done it as that I had not, for I was so drunk that I knew nothing about it at all. Jane was also very concerned about the dissection part of her sentence and it was very common at the time for criminals to have this done and not to be given a proper Christian burial. In a religious country it was seen as a far greater punishment than the hanging itself. On the morning of the execution she was again attended by the Reverend Green and at 8.45am she was pinioned, which means her hands were tied at the wrists, and then placed in a cart to take her to the gallows on the town moor. It is actually said in some versions of her story that Jane was made to sit on her own coffin in the cart. I imagine that if this is true, it was done as another part of her punishment, or perhaps it was just the cruel nature of the time in the treatment of criminals. She is said to have kept her eyes closed for the entire journey as she had been told to do so, so as not to see the crowds lining the route of her journey. At the gallows another prayer was said, then the cap was placed over her face. She stepped up to the gallows and said, I am ready. Death was almost instant. As was the custom back then, she was not removed from the gallows until an hour had passed. It was reported that around 20,000 people had turned out either to see Jane passing in the court or at the place of the execution and that half of those who were in attendance were females. It is also said that although hangings were meant to deter crime, several pickpockets were in action in the crowd on the day of the hanging. Times were very different then and after Jane's body was taken to Newcastle, people were actually allowed to pay one penny to view it until six o'clock on the evening of the execution. Although I have seen no reports of how many people did view it, I would imagine that several did. Though why, I don't really know. It's not something that I would want to do. But people at the time were often said to be obsessed with death, the dead, 
and criminals and executions and hangings were very popular pastimes, which is a, a strange way to describe it, but not a lot of other ways that you can describe it. For some time afterwards, her body was used for anatomical lectures by the surgeon, Mr John Fife. The story is a sad one. I have no doubt, based on details heard, that drink had played a massive part in the argument and that it had left two people paying the ultimate price. But I hope you have still found it interesting to learn a little more of the North East's darker past. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. And do please give the video a like and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to hear more stories like this one. Thank you for watching.